When your car runs out of gas, it's usually not a problem. You just fill up the tank. But it takes the Earth millions of years to make petroleum, which we use for fuel today. And despite efforts to keep up with the demands, the Earth will eventually run out of oil. Worse, as we burn fossil fuels, we create massive amounts of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas that threatens global climate. Whether it's for economic or environmental reasons, we can't rely on petroleum forever. So, what will replace this fossil fuel? I'm Esmeralda Rodriguez, a sophomore at Delta High School in Richland, Washington. To answer this question, I went to Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. There, I talked with researchers that have created a machine that produces renewable oil minutes after pouring in green goo made of algae. This process can lead to the next generation of biofuel. Today's toughest challenges require teams of creative problem solvers who use science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to find solutions. First, I talked to Kane and our researcher, Corin Drennan, about why we should pursue biofuel as an alternative to petroleum. Biofuels are fuels that are made from living materials, such as grasses or trees or algae. And these materials are grown by using water, sunlight, carbon dioxide, and nutrients. So can you tell me why biofuel would be better alternative than using fossil fuel? Biofuels aren't necessarily always better than petroleum-derived fuels, but they offer us an alternative. One way to think about this is that making the fossil fuel takes millions of years, and so it's more efficient to use that carbon dioxide to make a biofuel than to have to wait millions of years for the fossil fuel. So are we using biofuels today? Yes, biofuels are used today. Today we use what we call first-generation biofuels, and these are usually made from corn, Today we're looking at ways to make biofuels from things that can't also be used as food. So we're using materials like wood and grass and algae. My teammate Dan Anderson can tell you more about that. Well, algae are a great source for biofuels because the biofuels or the fossil fuels that we use today originated from algae for the most part. Where are we getting this algae from? Algae are virtually found everywhere. One of the algae that we're working with that has a very great potential for production of fuels was found in a ditch bank in West Texas. Another one was isolated from a cold weather area. So is algae easy to grow? So currently we're farming algae at about a hundred acre scale. Those are some of the biggest algae farms that exist in the world today. In order to make algae practical for fuels, it's gonna to have to be grown on thousands of acre scales, much like the large farms you see today for the production of our foods and grains. So is it just scientists that are involved in these algae farms or what other people contribute to growing the algae? It's gonna take a multidisciplinary team first to develop the technology that allows you to do that. We're talking biologists, engineers, agricultural type scientists, all coming together to figure out how to make this work. But once the technology is matured, it's gonna look, look a lot like a farm today. So you're gonna have a whole range of skill and skill level of people out there to make the farm operate. Can you explain how the algae becomes biofuel? So the algae feedstocks or the raw materials that are produced in the farm then have to be converted into a biofuel product for fuel production. And my colleague, Doug Elliott, will tell you about how that process works. We use a process we call hydrothermal liquefaction. And that means we use high temperature and pressure to convert the algae into biofuel. We use a temperature of 350 degrees Celsius, which is almost 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And the pressure is very high. It's 200 times the pressure in this room. So it sounds to me like the biofuel is made from multiple machines. Is that correct? So we actually do this process with several machines. There's a, a high pressure pump, there are separators for the bio crude, and then of course the high pressure temperature tubular reactor. Can we just put it into our cars? This is the first step of the process. We make what we call a bio crude oil in this hydrothermal liquefaction. It needs to be refined like petroleum that comes out of the ground needs to be improved to be actually make gasoline and diesel from petroleum hydrocarbons, we need to do similar kinds of upgrading of this bio crude to make the finished products. 
How many people are involved during this process? It's a team effort. We have scientists and engineers that are directing the project and do the design work to begin with, but there are other uh, machinists and craftspeople that put together the machine itself. And then we have operators that, that run the tests. We have other scientists and engineers that, that analyze the data after the fact to try to interpret the results. And then to take it to the next level, more engineering is required to take our data and make a real process that can be used out in the world. So how much biofuel can PNNL make? Well, this machine that we have is just a laboratory equipment. It's small scale. It produces just a few hundred grams an hour of this bio crude product. So getting this process out into society and getting marketable fuels is going to take significant more effort. And when it will actually be out there in the marketplace, that's a, a question we'll let Corinne answer for you. Before we see algae biofuels in the gas station, we'll need to scale up. We're currently making biofuels from algae at the laboratory scale, what we call a bench scale. We then need to demonstrate that we can do things at a larger scale and finally at an industrial scale where we can make algal biofuels in quantities that are enough to provide us with what we need at a gas station. Can our cars today use this fuel? Yes, today's cars can use the type of biofuels that we're making in the lab today. because We're making them to look and behave exactly like hydrocarbon fossil fuels. What steps or you know, what college courses can I take to be able to get an occupation in biofuel? If you would like to have a career in biofuels, there are many different opportunities available to you. You can be a technician, you can build equipment, you can run reactor systems, you can look at the data and make sure that the numbers make sense, you can design processes, you can sell them. If you want a career in biofuels, I would suggest that you follow your heart and your instincts. If you want to be a scientist, make sure that you take your math classes and enjoy your chemistry classes. We don't have to rely on fossil fuels to power our cars forever. Energy comes from sunlight, wind, water, chemical bonds, and places all around us, not just underground. STEM professionals at PNNL are working to make algae biofuel a reality. As students, we can play our part too. If we study STEM in school and pursue STEM careers, we can join others in solving the world's biggest challenges.